make January a motion. 25th, 2023. I'll make a motion. We approve the regular meeting minutes of January 18th. I'll second that. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. I'll make a motion. We approve the non-public meeting January 18th. I'll second, I'll second that. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. I'll make a motion. We approve the consent agenda. Second. Uh, is there any additions to the consent agenda? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Public input. A lot of people on Zoom, Josh? Two people. Good. Anyone specific you're waiting for? Well, for public input, not necessarily, but. If they raise their hand. Yeah, raise your hand or unmute and jump in. Seeing none. All right, seeing none. We'll continue on with uh, nomination of uh, Doug Scancy for the Golden Rod uh, Grange Hall Advisory Committee. I'll make the motion and with a term ending. Yeah, what's the date on the term? I term? think the committee runs their town meeting 2024. You so. didn't have the date, 24? Yeah, oh, yeah, 24, yes. Okay. I made the motion. Okay, second. Those in favor? In favor. Aye. Aye. Now it's five five th uh, thirty three. Yeah, we can go on to the next the uh, second appointment. DPW DOT. Yeah, okay. Is Ron Klein on the? Uh, I am here, yes. Aha, uh -huh, and he's not muted. Not anymore. <laughs> okay. Uh, Ron, you're, you're on because of the replacement of the state bridge on Route 32 over Martin Brook. Correct. Yeah, and Ron, as uh, typical, my uh, projector is not uh, accommodating, but I can show the PowerPoint to the select board. We don't exactly have droves of people here, so. Uh, okay. The folks uh, on Zoom will have to get a copy after, but. Okay. What color is the roof going to be on? <laughs> Good question. You want to get started, Ron? Yeah, so uh, will I be able to see the presentation or? <laughs> Unfortunately not. Uh, okay. So you can either follow along on your computer. Yeah, that's uh, fine. Like I said, my projector is not uh, cooperating. That works. All right, so yeah, uh, I'm Ron Kleiner. I'm the Senior Project Engineer with the Bureau of Bridge Design for the New Hampshire DOT. Uh, I'm here to discuss, as you mentioned, the project replacing uh, New Hampshire 32 Bridge over Martin Brook. Um, if you want to go to your next slide to kind of talk about the project team, um, also on Zoom tonight is Jason Tremblay. He's the project manager from the New Hampshire DOT running the project. Um, Dylan Schmidt, I believe, is also online. Uh, he's the environmental manager for the New Hampshire DOT. Um, and then representing the consulting firm of HDR, who is working on this project, we should have Nick Karen, uh, Rock Larachelle, and Kenny Howe um, from that consulting firm. So they're on the call as well. If you want to go to the next slide showing a map, um, just kind of just quick project location. This bridge is located in the southeast corner of, of Swansea, uh, near the Richmond and Troy borders. Next slide will show an aerial image. Um, apparently, New Hampshire 32 crosses Martin Brook several times going through town. Uh, we're talking about the one that's just a little bit south of uh, the Blake Road intersection on um, Route 32. Um, next slide. Um, should just go over why we're here, kind of the purpose of this project. Uh, we're looking to remove this bridge up from the red list, uh, take care of the uh, structural deficiencies associated with the bridge uh, to get that all taken care of. 
Um, the need of the project can be demonstrated by the, the spalling concrete you'll see in the side of the bridge. Um, you can see exposed rebar in places. Um, the bridge rail on the bridge is, is substandard as well as the overall geometry of the bridge itself. I guess next slide. It's hopefully showing some environmental review aspects. Um, due to, to the funding of this project, we're gonna have to follow some environmental regulations, um, specifically the National Environmental Policy Act, we call NEPA. Um, so we have to investigate potential impact to properties uh, that the, the project has on properties and environmental resources. And um, so we follow along with that. The next slide. Um, just more kind of legal explanation of why we're here. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the Section 106 process. That's a, a federal regulation that deals with environmental review um, and identifying historic resources in the area. Um, currently, we're reviewing this project with the Federal Highway and consult consultation with the uh, Division of Historical Resources. Um, any building structures 50 years or older and archaeological sites are considered during this review process. Uh, next slide should be the last bits of the environmental review. Um, that section 106 process allows individuals and groups to become what's called um, consulting parties. So if you anybody is interested in becoming a consulting party, uh, they can reach out to Jamison Sakura of the Federal Highway. Uh, we'll give us information on the next slide. Um, so if you have any knowledge of historic resources in the area, please feel free to reach out to us. And the next slide, hopefully we'll have Jamie Sikora's address and Dylan Schmidt's address, who I mentioned before was part of the DOT environmental team. So the next slide goes into the bridge itself, um, just kind of the existing bridge details. Um, it's a, a concrete slab deck on the bridge, so it's just concrete, there's no, no girders involved. Um, it's resting on concrete abutments. Uh, it's a single 25 foot span, uh, measures 21 feet curb to curb. It was built in 1929. And as I mentioned before, it's on the Hampshire DOT red list due to basically the condition of all, most of the bridge. Uh, it's rated off 443 in our inspection report, which puts it on the red list. Uh, the next slide should show a picture of the existing bridge. Uh, just kind of demonstrating the condition. You can see the spalling concrete on the side of the bridge. Obviously, the substandard guard bridge rail on the bridge itself. Um, the next slide should show the existing roadway. Uh, looking south to your left side and looking north on the right side. Uh, right now, the, the roadway has 11-foot lanes with basically one-foot shoulders on either side. Uh, it's not... Well, you know, it's, it's a little substandard design. It's designed for a 35, 30, for a 30 mile an hour design speed. Um, it sees about 2,600 cars a day. And you can kind of see on the, the picture, you've got that substandard guardrail as well as substandard approach rail, which is uh, contributing to some of the problems with the bridge itself. Next slide should talk about bridge rehabilitation because whenever we start a project, first thing we kind of look at is can we just rehabilitate the bridge? Um, what would need to be done to, to get that accomplished? Um, so we would be looking at in this case, um, is something like replacing the deteriorated concrete deck. Uh, we'd, we'd maybe replace the bridge and the approach rail on it that goes along with replacing the deck. Uh, we'd be repairing those concrete abutments and the, and the substructure aspect of it. Um, but this kind of rehabilitation option doesn't really help address that the geometry problem I was talking about, either the narrow way lanes and shoulders or that um, 30 mile an hour design curve involved with the bridge uh, alignment. Um, and the slide says it would also not extend the expected service life. What that kind of means is it, um, it's still a 1929 bridge. So you're not gonna get around the fact that the bridge is almost a hundred years old at this point. Um, and you're gonna be, you're running on borrowed time no matter what you really do with it. Next slide should go into the bridge replacement options. Um, again, we're kind of working through what exactly we think would be the right choice for this bridge, um, but just kind of in, in general senses, we're looking at 
a replacement option would be something along the lines of completely replacing the structure. Uh, we'd probably want to lengthen the bridge to, to meet some current stream crossing rules. Um, so likely making that 25 foot bridge, something like a 59 or 60 foot bridge. Um, we would want to widen the bridge itself, the, the lanes going across the bridge to give you the wider shoulders that are gonna be a little bit better. Uh, we want to replace that bridge rail and the, the approach rail leading up to the bridge to make that more standard. Um, and since it would be a full replacement, you, you get that additional service slice as well as addressing completely um, all the purpose and needs that are associated with the project. Uh, the next slide should show some replacement concepts. Again, just kind of, if we had a hunch, this is where it would look like, um, perhaps some concrete girders. Um, again, we give you that, that full width we'd be looking for, or 11 foot lanes, uh, scoops those up to you know, five foot shoulders on the bridge. We'd put some standard guardrail on there. Um, we'd, we'd lengthen out that span to allow the water to pass more freely underneath uh, and make it a, a more standard completed structure when we're done. Uh, the next slide talks about ways to potentially fix the problematic alignment. Um, again, just conceptually, we could, we could look at shifting the alignment either to the west um, or to the east. What we're showing here is, again, just the conceptual ideas that uh, we would have to look at further depending on, on how uh, the project progresses and what options really kind of present as the most logical choice. Um, next slide should show some traffic control options. Uh, whenever we're doing a project, we have to deal with the, the 2,500 cars a day that are using the bridge. Um, the first option is, you know, always look at potentially closing the bridge, uh, in which case we would want to close the bridge and then sign a detour using state routes to get traffic around the, the area. Uh, or we could look at uh, phase construction using temporary signals and alternating traffic going across the bridge. Uh, next slide should show the traffic control for the detour option. Um, so we would close the bridge and we would sign the detour along state routes, uh, New Hampshire 32, New Hampshire 12, New Hampshire 119. Um, that's showing a 32 mile detour. Now that goes from one side of the bridge on state routes only all the way to the other side of the bridge. Um, if you're looking at kind of like a cut through route, say from Richmond to Keene, you'd really only add about eight miles going around the detour on those state routes. And most likely the people in the town of Swansea would be able to find local roads going around that as well um, to shorten up that, that detour length that we're talking about. Uh, the advantage of the detour is it shortens the construction duration. Um, you know, maybe instead of a nine month construction time frame, you'd be looking at a six month construction time frame. Uh, it would lower the cost, maybe something like 20% over doing a phase construction. Um, and just kind of give you a, a better and safer construction zone during the project itself. Uh, the next slide should look again at a traffic control for the phase construction alternative. Uh, would be able to most likely maintain an 11 foot wide lane going through the project. We alternate that using traffic signals. Um, that would restrict wide loads from going through, but we would coordinate with uh, highway maintenance to make sure that we could get those wide loads around the area. Um, again, it would be the alternating traffic would add a little bit of length to the construction time frame, uh, but it would allow traffic to go through the area during construction. Uh, next slide should look at some natural and cultural resources that we're looking at the area. Uh, Martin Brook is obviously a, 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 a brook, so we need a wetland permit for uh, any area that are impacted in this project in there. Um, the bridge itself has been deemed not to be eligible for the National Register of Historic Places, uh, but we'll continue reviewing those historic resources, like I mentioned before, in accordance with Section 106. Um, there are a couple of threatened and or endangered species in the area, including the northern long-eared bat, dwarf wedge mussel. Um, so we'd have to be looking at it ways to accommodate them during the construction of the project uh, going forward. Uh, next slide should kind of look at an anticipated project design schedule. Uh, like I alluded to, we're going through the preferred alternative selection right now. Um, so we can sort of develop what we think the right option should be, 
um, develop some preliminary plans to go along with that. Uh, we'd be looking to come to present the project again to the, the town once we've got some, some more direction, uh, maybe in the fall of this year. Uh, we'd be completing that environmental process I talked about uh, later this year or early next year, which allow us to move on to the final design of the project and 24 and 25 to advertise this project for bid the summer of 2025 for likely construction in the 2026 season. So next slide, kind of why we're here presenting to the town. Um, we would appreciate input, whether that's local information that we might necessarily have, uh, things like emergency response routes, maybe mutual aid, school bus routes, you know, flooding concerns, anything else that the town um, may have that we, they think we should consider during the design of this process. Um, and then I guess the last slide is just the contact information for Jason. As I mentioned, he's the project manager for this project. Um, so there's his email and his telephone number as well as the address for the DOT website for this project, uh, which will have copies of this presentation and then any other documents moving forward for the, the project itself. And so I guess at this point, I would welcome any comments or questions from anybody. So is it pretty open, still open in terms of you'd be doing the phase construction or the closure route? At this point, yeah, we're, we'd still be looking at that, those options to kind of see which fits the best for this project in this location um, with input from, from the people here um, and going forward to see what, what works the best, yeah. I think the Swansea to Richmond traffic going south is probably relatively limited. It probably would be more of a concern for Richmond, I would think, whether it would be closed or not. Um, there are a number of people who live south of that bridge, like Katie Lane, I'm thinking. Right. Is Katie Lane south? Yeah. They need to get into town. That would be. Ryan, this is Sly Garrisonski. The, uh, Realignment of the curve. Are you going, planning on going to the west, any to take the curve out? Um, yeah, as I said, we haven't really decided what the best way to address that alignment is going to be. Um, the west um, would make some sense, but it does have some more environmental aspects with the river right there or the brook right there next to the road. Um, I, the alignment you, we're showing on this, we showed to the west did involve a pretty lengthy retaining wall. So a cost like that would have to be incorporated into any sort of decision based on that. Um, but yes, the west is an option that's probably the, the more likely option, um, but we're still evaluating both of those at this, at this moment. Yeah, if you could, um, depending on how far to the west you could go, I'd be in favor of having uh, one of those temporary traffic light signals you know, with one lane, like you do on other bridges during the construction process. Okay. And uh, that being said, as far as the trout fishing in that area in Martin Brook, is there any thought to doing any kind of uh, turn off parking area or anything on the east side, maybe even off of Blake Road? That wasn't a recreation area. Yeah, that wasn't something we'd considered for this project. Thank you. You mentioned. Uh, Pedestrian bicycle bicycle use. I think it's probably pretty limited. Out that section of town getting getting pretty uh, den densely popular or not very densely populated out there. So I don't know that that's a major major concern. Probably. Well, like you said, there's not much of a lane on the side to right. <laughs> do anything. Can I mention when we lived in Eastville Crossing, we used Blake Road and often, and other people did come out onto 32 and take a left and then take a right onto um, 
No, no. Left, it, it, on the road that takes you over to Swansea Lake Road. Warmack? Warmack Road? Yes, Warmack, yeah. sorry. You, you take a left onto 32, you take sure. a right onto Warmack, and it gets you on the Swansea Lake, and it took you to the lake. Or it took you to, you know, over to 10 or whatever. I think a lot of people do that. Now, yeah. it's not, you know, we're not talking city, but there are residential areas right there that would normally take that little shortcut to get over to Warmack Road. I think your idea of keeping one right open is a good one. Well, is it, is, it, is it really that far out of your way to go to, to East Swansea Village and then take South Road over to 232 and then up to Swansea Lake Road? It depends on how, like, if, it depends on how far in you are to, um, if you're into Blake or, or you're even in Goodell or you know, those na that neighborhood in there. But there, there are all Original. kinds of options. Yes, there, there, are, there, are, all, there are alternatives, yes. There, you know, absolutely. Uh, mm -hmm. And I was also thinking that, that people who live on, uh, what's the development just south of this bridge? Katie Lane. Katie Lane. Katie Lane. Um, that they can go down to Hale Hill, correct? They have to go up, you I mean, south, south, so, to Hale Hill. Go, but right. it's not that far. Well, yeah, we're not talking about a, a year plus. We're talking about maybe six months. Is that right, Ron? Yeah, something in that time frame. So, you know, I mean, there's got to be some inconvenience here. I, I, you know, and, and, and I don't foresee it being a major, major problem uh, as long as it can be addressed partially. There's a lot of uh, campers that go down to the campground in Richmond, and I don't know if we want those traveling Hill Hill Road and going through Rich, Old Richmond Road at intersection. It's going to be tough. And then the log trucks that you see come up through there. Well, I, think, I think the log trucks can, can certainly circumvent and get over to the other major routes that were on that slide. Uh, You mentioned on your list, Ron, uh, school bus routes. We can set you up with the superintendent for the school district, but that's not, I don't think that's anything we're in a position. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Flooding concerns, you know about any significant flooding in that area? So, right? Not there. I think the last time it was further south there by the Hale Hill Road intersection flooded more than this one. Um, Andy Hill that lives right there could probably tell you better. And um, I know that bridge has been hit. Those little steel guardrails kept our fire truck from going in there one time. So. <clears throat> it's a tough curve. Josh, you mentioned there are some other folks on Zoom. Anyone raising their hand or indicating they'd like to provide any input? Anything from Bill? Seasonal concerns. I mean, I guess the only thing kind of goes to Sly's point, especially if we're doing uh, more of the closure versus base construction as if it was, which I assume it probably wouldn't be, but if it was during like mud season, we post the, the town roads now. So, um, you know, if you're starting early March or something might limit the ability of, but I know your emphasis is on the state, uh, using the state roads for a detour, but if, it's, right. if it was a closure, it'd be pushing probably more traffic onto local roads that might be posted for weight. So we definitely wouldn't want to be pushing, like the slide was mentioning, the log trucks onto the town roads if you were planning on starting that early in the construction season, which again, I assume you're probably not, but. Yep, no, that's a good point.
I think that's about what we can come up with for input, Ron. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. That was appreciated. Get back out there plowing. <laughs> we will. <laughs> All right. I think that's it. Unless you had anything else, I think I think that covers that one. All right. Good. Thank you very much for this opportunity, and thanks for offering that uh, virtual option. That was that was appreciated. Yeah, it would have been a long, long ride home. I bet. Yes, it would. Thanks for your crew. Maybe we could get the PowerPoint on the town's website. That'd yes, great. Yeah. All right, thank you. Thanks, Ron. Okay, on to the next consideration of new business. Yeah, so as we've been working through the design and now permitting for the recycling center, we have an excuse me, may I just interrupt um, point of order, you have a status property tax payment plan. Was that re removed from the agenda? Yes, table until next week. Mr. Bell is out plowing, or we'll be out plowing. Um, so as we've been working through the transfer station improvements uh, design process, we've identified some additional work that wasn't in Fieldstone's um, initial proposal, still well below the other proposal we considered, which was from Underwood Engineers, but we'd be looking for an additional, um, I, get, I think this said 6,800, 6, but I'd like to round it up to 8,000 to hopefully incorporate any uh, permitting fees from the Recycling Center Revolving Fund. We'll make the motion. Second. Eight thousand's enough. Up to eight. Is... I think so. Yep. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, Home-based business application. We need to add a bakery at Map Fifty, Lot One, Sorish Crossing Road. No, we choose another bakery. Whereabouts where are that? I'd like to go to bakeries. For one. Blood's old place there. What's it? What's it? By Blood's old farm there. The, oh. The 416. Yeah. Okay, that's good to know. We'll give you their contact info when they're up and running. <laughs> First one. Any further questions regarding? I'll make the motion to approve the home based business application. I'll second that. Further discussion? Hearing none. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. February meeting, meeting schedule. Oh, meeting let's, schedule. Not get, let's not get into that. Oh, yeah. um, so we'd be looking at just our regular meeting um, next Wednesday. We have the public hearing on the expansion of the uh, North Swansea Precinct Empire and also um, acceptances of some unanticipated funds sent out that notice on Monday. Um, so that'd be next Wednesday. Then the following week, we'd be looking at Tuesday for a brief meeting before deliberative session. Um, we have that Wednesday reserved as a possible snow date. And then the 15th and 22nd, just normal Wednesday meetings. For the discussion. Bill, any objections? Consensus. Consensus would be good. Okay. Um, one other uh, additional item for kind of along the same lines as the uh, transfer to station um, project for the North Winchester, California St Street project. Uh, we need some additional funding for Underwood to assist us with the NEPA, kind of similar to what Ron was talking about, permitting. Uh, review. So I'd be looking for an additional 5,000 from the Municipal Transportation Capital Reserve Fund. I'll make the motion. I'll second it. Okay, would you please repeat the, uh, the 5,000? 5,000 for uh, additional design and permitting for the North Winchester and California Street reconstruction project. Oh, yeah. Okay. NEPA review, if you want to get really specific. Don't ask me to tell you again what that stands for, but Ron said it. So this is up to 5,000 or 5,000? I think it was a flat 5,000. Flat 5,000. 
I'm sorry? Flat 5,000? Yeah, this is flat. Yeah. Okay. okay. Any further discussion? None. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. All business? Don't forget about deliberative session. Next Wednesday. <laughs> Is it next? No, no. I was trying to mess with you. Yeah. Well, no, isn't it? Tuesday after next. It's, yeah, you know what I meant. <laughs> or does he? Okay, anything else? No, sir. Don't you adjourn? Second. Okay. Right.